The 2023 Challenger from Mercedes didn't turn out exactly as the team would have wanted it to, and now they're facing huge issues ahead of the campaign that was supposed to bring them back glory after the 2022 fiasco. Even though the porpoising issue is long gone, the newly acquired problems like increased drag and decreased stability of the W14 have proven too much of a bite to chew for Hamilton and Russell, with the seven-time world champion being absolutely on fire when describing the W14's characteristics. So can we see a competitive Mercedes in 2023 after what Hamilton just said? The pre-season testing in Bahrain went bad for Mercedes, and this is where they were able to meet their new friend, increased drag and reduce stability. But while everyone thought that the sandbag is real and Mercedes is hiding off performance, something that Wolf himself also added, it's evident that the W14 is not capable of winning races at this point when you have such a dominant challenger in Red Bull and Aston Martin. That's why the results in Bahrain were truly eye-opening for Mercedes, so much so that they were forced to bring upgrades to the second track on the race, Jeddah. The performance there was better, but yet again, Hamilton feels a bit held back by a specific design element that just doesn't suit him at all. Keep in mind that just a couple of weeks ago, the seven-time world champion brutally slammed the team for not listening to him when they should have in terms of the side pod design and the entire concept of the car still being kept nervous the same as the one in 2022. On the other hand, Russell seems to enjoy the troublesome designs even more, which brings up the question of whether he and Hamilton have different setups for every race they go to, something that we'll cover later in this video. First, we want to talk about the W14's design, which truly left Hamilton wondering as to how he didn't have more pace to finish ahead of P8 in Saturday's qualifying session, even though he was able to climb a couple of spots on the ladder on Sunday. We're a long way down on downforce, so we got to pick up the rear end downforce particularly. The more rear we gain, the more stable the rear becomes, and the more confident I'll be able to attack. But I think in general, just this car, even if we do change that, there's a specific thing with something on the car that I've never had before. It's position I've not had in previous years' cars. For me, it's the thing that's making me uncomfortable. I've just got to work hard to make sure it's changed. And this was furthermore confirmed by Toto Wolff who did say that the team and Hamilton were able to agree that there is a fundamental issue on the car that the seven-time world champion isn't happy with, and it's definitely linked with the rear end of the car. But what goes against Hamilton's progress is the fact that this particular issue is not the one that can be cured quickly. And no matter how many sensors one car has, the most important one is the driver. And if Hamilton feels like something is wrong, then there is definitely something wrong with the car's rear end. Hamilton was then further asked to explain more in detail about this particular issue, and according to the Briton, the issue seems to manifest itself by making the car very uncomfortable for him when it's taken to the limit, especially during the qualifying sessions. Furthermore, he went on to add, It's on a massive knife edge when you're above about 95%, but when you're in a race stint, it's much more controllable and predictable. I still don't have the confidence in the race, but I'm doing the best I can with it. Now, one thing that Mercedes can definitely take as a positive from the previous weekend is the fact that the small upgrades they brought to the W14 seem to have worked their way, as Russell was even close to finishing on the podium while Hamilton had to satisfy with P5 behind him. One thing is for sure, with good strategy, something that Ferrari cannot brag about, and with a bit of improvement in the car's small windows, Mercedes can definitely charge for second place in the construction Constructors' Championship, something that seemed like a utopia just a couple of weeks ago. That's something that even Hamilton recognised, as he went on to add that while it feels very strange for them to see the Ferrari behind, it's definitely a positive for them, and while Jeddah's surface and the downforce requirement definitely went in the W14's favour, it's not going to be like this throughout the entire course of the season. True, Mercedes has a lot of positives to take from this weekend, but the reality remains the same. The car is not able to win races and compete for championships, and that's something Mercedes wants to fix sooner rather than later. This sooner rather than later means that the W14's massive upgrade package will arrive in Imola, Italy, and when it does, Hamilton will have a huge problem on his hands, outperforming Russell. 
This didn't seem like a real thing prior to the beginning of the 2022 season, but Russell showed that he came here to play and not be the second fiddle to Hamilton's quest for the eighth record-breaking championship. And one thing that Hamilton cannot bail on now is the settings of the car. The seven-time world champion was surprised when he saw Russell performing the way he did in the previous race weekend. And one of the reasons why is that the young Britain's car settings were usually the wrong choice in the past. While talking about this matter and saying that the strategy and the setup didn't quite work out for Hamilton, adding that if he had the setup that George had, he would have been in a much worse position. Hamilton was further asked as to how big is the input from the driver's side in the strategy calls and car setups as he elaborated. We work on that, there was like a 50-50 choice. I chose one way, he chose another. More often than not, where we went is the wrong one, but it just happened to work. So I could only match his pace rather than be quicker this weekend, but I'll work hard to make sure that we're in a better place. And it goes without saying that Hamilton's push for the 8th championship is definitely what keeps him at bay in Mercedes. So when he spoke about the car's preferences and the way it acts right now, it was more than evident that he could force his way out of the team. He's known as a loyal driver, and things like this do not suit his reputation or resume. However, there comes a certain point where your personal beliefs are put in front of everyone else's, so in that case, we're yet to see whether Hamilton would force his way out of Mercedes and sign with a team, likely Ferrari, that could offer him a potential championship ride, even though that's definitely not a guarantee there. But Mercedes are doing everything they can to please Hamilton and Russell, especially the seven-time world champion. And one of the facts that point to this narrative is the return of James Allison. The former technical director of the team has been brought back to Mercedes F1 in order to oversee the operations of the new upgrades on the W14. And rumors are that he's already has his imprints on the W14's design development that are yet to hit the track in Imola. One thing that Hamilton will most definitely look forward to is the design change on the W14, one that Wolf has spoken about and that has some quite controversial options as well. Even though F1 is a sport in which innovation prevails over copying, Mercedes is likely at a point where they wouldn't care or feel shame if the car looked the same as Red Bull, something that's been said by the man himself, Toto Wolff. When talking about this matter, the Austrian added, We have no dogmatism of how the car should look like. It just needs to be the quickest possible race car. If that looks like a Red Bull, I don't care. It just needs to be quick. It's all the aerodynamic surfaces that are visible from the leading edge all the way to the diffuser and the beam wing. There is a massive amount on the floor, obviously, with a ground effect car. And then there are many more architectural things that are necessary in order to give in the bodywork that you think is most efficient. So literally, the car is being turned upside down at the moment and there's a lot of goodness that we see. With that in mind, what do you think about Mercedes' progress in the following period? And do you think that they have what it takes to win races yet again with the new design after Hamilton has been very vocal about the things the team practiced to do on the W14 in 2023? Let us know in the comments down below.